Hey you guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome back. Um, today's video is going to be focused on a kimono cardigan. A cardigan kimono? I don't know which way you'd put that to, you know, make it sound right. But anyway, it's gonna be a kimono. I saw it recently on, um, I believe it was Pinterest. It was trending and I was like, ooh, I should totally make this out of like a African print fabric and just totally bang it out so I'm like well why not make the pattern um so I did so uh, if you're interested in knowing how to make the pattern definitely keep watching but if you have already purchased the pattern and you just want to know how to sew it together and then you know just skip to that part <laughs> and just skip to that part the timestamps are down below subscribe to the channel like share for the ones who are interested in learning how to sew and yeah let's get it started all right so for the creation of this pattern go ahead and get a long piece of paper out this sheet of paper should be um as long as let's see from the nape of your neck to the floor or the desired length that you want um, preferably beyond your knees <laughs> so um, yeah and then add an additional five more inches so that you have space to add your seam allowance and so forth um, you can use newspapers a lot of times I use newspapers or you can use gift wrapping paper gift wrapping paper is superb for pattern drafting they do have some brands out there that actually have the grid in the back which is perfect for when you are trying to you know line things up and make sure that things are balanced and perpendicular and so forth but um, go ahead and get your paper out and we're gonna mark our first marking. Our first marking will be one and a half inch from the upper edge, and you can mark that as A. From A to B, it'll be the nape of your neck to your waist. Measure that and mark that distance here and mark it as B. From B to C, that'll be the distance from your waist to the floor. Once you have that measurement, you can go ahead and mark C and you can consider this line here or the edge of your paper as your center front or your center back all right so the first thing we're going to do is extend a out three inches make sure that line is perpendicular from your center front and then for b we're going to extend it out in order for us to get this measurement here we need to measure your hips so go ahead and measure your hips add four more inches to it and then you're going to divide that total by four the reason why we're dividing it by four is technically because we're only making a quadrant of the pattern <laughs> um you'll have two center front and the center back will be cut on fold so in total you'll have the overall width plus four more inches just so that you can have some ease and some flow you don't want this to be form fitting um, it's a loose cardigan um, yeah so once you have that mo that number once you have that number go ahead and extend it out make sure again just like a you need for it to be perpendicular so if you have like an L ruler go ahead and use that um, or any type of ruler as long as it's perpendicular as long as your line is perpendicular, not the ruler. <laughs> All right, for C, you are going to get um, the B measurement, whatever that measurement was, and you're gonna add three more to it. And then make that line perpendicular to the center front. Moving on. All right, so number five, we're gonna add mark D on the upper edge of the paper <laughs> um, it should be four inches from the corner and then from there you can connect that line to a number six 
we're gonna mark E. From D to E, this will actually be your shoulder seam, right? So you can measure from your actual neck to wherever you want the sleeve to end. So if you want it to end at your wrist, just measure that distance. And then from there, you can extend that line, line E, perpendicular from your shoulder seam, 10 inches. If you want it to be bigger, then by all means, you know, go ahead and expand it out all you want. It's up to you. It's it's your preference <laughs> um, and then from there you can actually pivot that line so that it's parallel to the shoulder seam which will be step seven there we go you make that line parallel to the shoulder seam and you extend it all the way down towards the center front now it doesn't need to come all the way down here but just be aware that this line needs to connect to that line which needs to connect to here so if you like make this tiny little short line then um, you're gonna have a huge curve here which you know it, it's not a big deal it'll just give you a different shape in the end If you have a curve ruler or a hip ruler or um, fringe curve, anyway, there's so many different types of curve rulers out there. You can go ahead and grab them just so that you have a smooth curve from your underarm seam, I guess you could call it, to your actual side seam. So use that to just curve it, make it nice and smooth, and you're gonna use another ruler, the hip curve ruler, to smooth this out as well. I believe I have this on the website. If you go to tcmewee.com, you should be able to download like, like a free PDF file on um, the hip curve ruler. But from there, you'd have to tape it together and then um, be able to use it. So it's up to you on how you smooth it. If you, uh, you could also smooth it out with your hand too. You just need to make sure that that line is smooth because you don't want any sharp edges. This is what it should look like so far. Technically, consider this to be your full center back. We're almost there. <laughs> if you have not subscribed to the channel, definitely do so. Like, comment down below. Let me know what you think thus far. Um, but let's keep going so that we can get to the actual sewing portion. Um, from here, we're going to create the line for the center front. Step nine will be connecting D to B. It's the shoulder seam, the shoulder neck seam to the actual waist. Once you have this line here at this corner, go ahead and curve it. That way it's nice and smooth. You don't want any sharp edges. Um, this corner here, if you leave it as is, it actually becomes very uh, hard to sew because you're gonna roll this twice. So that little corner kind of make it a little bit difficult. Step 10, you are going to add seam allowance. So from A to D, to E, you can add a half an inch seam allowance from E to this corner here. You can add a one inch seam allowance because technically that's the hem. From this corner <laughs> to that corner, technically your side seam and underarm seam, you can make that a half an inch. And from here your hem the hem of the garment you can make it one inch now for this pattern it's all inclusive um, but the actual pattern on the Etsy shop is split it up into two so you have an actual center front and you have an actual center back and your sleeve extension is here the reason to why I added a sleeve extension is because a lot of times your fabric won't fit this whole width um, the fabric that I had, I was only able to fit the actual body without the <laughs> and without the extension. I'm pointing to the screen like you can see. <laughs> um, without the extension, 
So with that being said, just be conscious of it. Um, if you want long, super extravagant sleeves, you might have to make the sleeve as its own pattern piece. And then you can connect it with a seam, which is what I have for the actual Etsy with the actual pattern. Um, so from D to B is the actual center front and then, you know, the center back would be here. The center back is going to be cut one time and it needs to be placed on the fold. And your center front will be cut twice and of course that doesn't need to be on a fold. You just need to make sure that you have your seam allowance. That way, um, you know, everything is nice and smooth. If you have a one directional print or you have a um, certain type of pattern, like a plaid fabric, make sure that you have more than enough fabric to accommodate those pattern pieces. They can be a hassle. <laughs> um, obviously, if you have a one way print, you wouldn't be able to set up your fabric like this. Otherwise, you'll have, you know, the words going in the right direction on the back and then they're going upside down in the front. Now, if that's your motto, if that's what you're going for, then by all means, you know, do your thing, boo boo. But <laughs> if it's not, then you need to be mindful. Um, you'd have to rotate this pattern so that it's going here um, alongside with this, you know, center back pattern. Therefore, you would have to buy twice as much fabric in order to accommodate that pattern but that is it let's go ahead and cut out our pattern pieces along with the sleeve extension that i ended up having to do and then we will start putting this garment together step one will be to connect the center front and the center back to the sleeve extension make sure that your pattern is facing the same direction and you are sewing on the wrong side so put right sides together add your pins and match your notches and go ahead and sew them straight across i like to sew all of my pieces if i'm doing that one seam I like to do it for all of them all together. So as you can see, I'll have them all connected and I serge them the same way. And then from that point, I go back and I clip them so that I can trim them open. The next thing to do will be to attach your shoulder seam. So with the front and the back together, make sure you have your seam allowance for your sleeve extension to be going down towards the hem and then from there you're going to sew it straight across your seam allowance should be a half an inch it should, it will, oh it was supposed to be a half an inch for the sleeve extension as well my apologies i did not say that before but go ahead and sew that straight across and just like we did with the sleeve extension once you are done you are going to serge it or zigzag stitch it um close uh you're not going to zigzag stitch the seam allowance open it'll be closed so you'll have to do this step for the shoulder seam on both sides as well as your side seams once you are done serging the next thing to do would be to create your sleeve hem you simply need to fold it over twice and sew on top of that folded edge you would repeat the same process for the hem of the garment. Unfortunately, I did not record that part, or if I did, it's just gone missing. <laughs> so we're just gonna move on to the patch pocket. I will add a link down below that shows just extra footage on how to hem a garment, whether it is by blind hem or the fold over twice method, as I like to call it. Uh, but it'll be down below just for additional information. If you've never sewn before, at least you'll have that footage and you can follow along with that. So with your patch pocket, go ahead and fuse some fusible interfacing to the upper edge. It could be an 
a quarter, I'm sorry, an inch and a quarter. And then from there, you would fold a quarter of an inch over onto the wrong side. This is just so that we can encase that top edge into itself. That way it's not showing. Like when you put your hand in your pocket, you don't need your hand to be catching, you know, the raw edge and it starts to fray and then it becomes messy. If you don't want to do that, you can always serge it if you have a serger. But I have a serger and I still prefer to use this method um, only because it makes it look nice and clean. Like it gives you a nice clean edge. From there, you can fold it over again at one inch so that you can have your actual placement for where you're going to put your top stitch. So remember, the first fold is at a quarter, the second fold it is at an inch. <laughs> and then you're gonna flip it over to the right side. So fold that crease that you just made back over to the right side and just pin it. You're gonna pin it onto itself and then we will add a perimeter stitch along the side. Your perimeter stitch will start from the very top corner. So line up your fabric so that you have a half an inch. Make sure to back stitch and this time you are going to sew all around the perimeter of this pocket. Be sure to stay steady. Try to keep your spacing even from that raw edge and just take your time while you're going around those curves. Once you get to the other corner, be sure to back stitch because that is a tension area. From this point, we are going to trim and clean off the corners. So for you to trim, you have to make sure that you are very careful that you don't cut off your actual stitch. You can cut like a triangular, cut into the fabric just so that when you turn it inside out those corners are nice and clean and they're not bulky or like bunching over you want it to sit nice and clean once you have completed the trimming for the corners you can go ahead and just press it inside out so that it's nice and flat and add your top stitch. I find it easier to sew on the side where the previous fold was, where we made the fold at a quarter of an inch, because it allows me to stay very close to the edge and um, almost make it like an edge stitch. Since I'm following that edge, I'm able to stay nice and straight. But it's up to you if you want. You can do it on the right side of the fabric um, it really won't make any difference. Just as long as you stay steady and you keep it nice and straight. For the trimming of the curve, you can put just small slits into the seam allowance just so that the curvature of that fabric will, again, curve properly and fold properly. That way it's not bulging. Um, by adding the slits, it allows the fabric to overlap versus creating small gathers and causing it to just bunch up in the inside. As you can see, your perimeter stitch ends up as the guide for where the curve of the pocket needs to be. So it's very important when you're sewing that perimeter stitch, you stay nice and steady. That way you have a nice smooth line. Otherwise your pocket, it will show since that's the line that you are following. Once you've ironed it in place, please use an iron for this. Don't try to like pin it. <laughs> Just use an iron and like smooth it out. If your material is very tricky and it's not staying where you've ironed it or it's taking a whole lot of effort just for it to stay in place you can use the double-sided fusing um the size that i've always seen has been five eighths of an inch but you can always cut it in half that way it just fits right underneath that small seam allowance and it allows it to just stay in place Now that your patch pocket is ready to be attached, 
Um, if you have a busy fabric like mine and you were unable to see where exactly you're supposed to place it or your marking that you placed with carbon paper and tracing wheel, you can follow this step here. Um, go ahead and measure the distance from the center front to the top edge of your pocket. Once you have that measurement, just, you know, have it on standby for the time being. And this time you are going to measure the top of your pocket to your hem. You're going to do that for both corners because you need to make sure that it's leveled and it's parallel. Like the top edge of your pocket needs to be parallel to the ground. Those two same distances, you're gonna have to repeat them onto your right side. <laughs> Unless you want one pocket to be higher than the next, then, you know, by all means, be creative, do your thing. But uh, I think that'd be pretty cool though, if you had like um, different colors or, I don't know, do like color blocking pockets and one's higher and anyway, let's not go off into a deep tangent. Um, once you have it in place, go ahead and pin it so that you don't lose your placement. And then from there, you are ready to top stitch. When you are top stitching, you are going to start on the very edge top corner. Be sure to back stitch because again, this is going to be a stress, um, attention area from when you're putting things in your pocket so usually when a pocket starts to rip it starts to rip at the well a patch pocket anyway they'll start to rip from the upper edge so making sure that you backstitch there will really secure it in place um, be close to the edge for the first stitch and this allows you to just follow that edge more smoothly it'll give you a better shaping um, of a pocket if you start from the edge versus if you start you know a half an inch inside and then you're trying to wig it from there um, stay close to the edge follow your perimeter stitch be steady smooth uh, go easy on it that way it's nice and clean um, this top stitch is going to be at the top it's going to show so take your time with it your secondary stitch will be a quarter of an inch away from the previous. So once you are done, be sure to back stitch in the front as well as the back. And that will be it for the patch pocket. overall look of what the cardigan looks like very quick very simple you can dress it up dress it down like you could do so many things with this thing um but yeah uh, i hope you like it uh thank you for purchasing the pattern if you have not definitely check out the etsy shop i am going to be posting more uh so stay tuned subscribe like share and i will see you next time happy sewing not worth it cause i'll slip into your dreams tonight oh so give me so give me your all i'll take it i'll take it to mars oh i'll stick like glue inside your mind just watch me breaking your